Good morning. It's good to see you all this morning. Looks like the rain has. Redonda just said that her dad, who's been a pastor for many, many years, said one drop of rain can keep 10 people away from church. <laughs> so there's a lot of rain up there. But we're glad you're here this morning and very thankful that, that you have chosen to, to come and worship Almighty God with us again. As we've gone throughout this week, uh, we have. You're just a good, good God. Um, again, I love Lamentations 3, 20 to 22. It says, you know, that his compassions, his mercies are new every day. Meaning that if I was just really stinky with God yesterday, he's still there with me. He's still offering. He's still calling us to continue to follow him and, and love him. So we're, we're glad that you're here today. We invite you to stand with us as we begin. Ben, you're back there. Could you lead us in an opening prayer, please? I can try. That's all right. God can hear you. <laughs> You guys get to sing much louder for us today. But let's read our scripture, this uh, talking about what we are to do. Sing about the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Psalm 66, 1 and 2. So let's sing that together, all creatures of our God and King.
Let's read this together. Taste and see that the Lord is good. How happy is the person who takes refuge in him. Psalm 34, 8. Really look into God, see who he is, and see that he's good. And what does that do? It changes us. It gets us joyful because of him, not because of circumstances. God, you're so good. Give you strength, fruit. Uh, my friend has drank a lot. That's good. Then. Anybody else? Have you seen God? Yeah, September 11th from that memory and what happened. 
great hit at the remembrance. You know, we know. experience so much heartache. But the scriptures said in Job 131, let's read this. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job 121. You know, we love it when God gives. We're only sad because he's taken away, but we should be thrilled that he has given to us. Spafford, who wrote the, the words of this, I mean, suffered that. That's why it's such a very balanced song that no matter what, we can always go to Christ and say, It is well with my soul.
thank you that we can trust you because you're almighty God, because you love us. The children, come on up, get your worship bags from Ruth. I need to head down to Children's Church on this Christmas. Hopefully next week our lightning strike problems will be fixed. We just got to run new cables from our ups projector back, and so we'll hopefully have that. I can't make my animals anymore. Here, so. had the opportunity a couple times to see this live in person. I didn't take this picture, but I've seen this. My mom used to be a missionary in Romania, where Don and I got to go visit her once, and my brother and I got to go visit her. Um, it was back right after communism rule was crushed. And a lot of chaos over there, but I'd always grown up in Uh, we saw him from a distance, took a picture, but the picture wasn't very good, so I found this one to, to show. Because what they did, they, they, they had these cloaks of sheepskin over them, and they went out and lived and slept among the sheep. To say about all the shepherd parts. Uh, and Peter writes about it in 1 Peter 5. Two and three says he's talking to elders, pastors. Says shepherd God's flock among you, not overseeing out of compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not out of greed for money, but eagerly, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And there's so much in there, but it's the flock has been entrusted to the shepherd. John MacArthur said, a good shepherd is not known by how he gently pets the sheep. So we've been going through the, the book, a letter that Paul wrote to the Christians in Galatia. Um, and he's very concerned about them because they have turned away from the truth of salvation through faith alone in Christ. They started listening to others. They started following others. And sometimes Paul had to walk down and get a, a Kleenex for his nose. So I'll follow his example. Chapter and verse on that? Yeah, chapter, yeah, it's in uh, Second Opinions 4 3. <laughs> but Paul had, had great concern. And we're at a point now in, in the this, this study where Paul shares a little bit more of his heart. The truth of the gospel about Christ, about salvation through Christ alone, faith alone. And the gospel is that good news against the bad news of our sin, and the bad news is that God has a punishment for our sin, a forever and ever punishment uh, after we die. And those sins have separated us from God. But the, the gospel is that good news that, that God sent his son, Jesus. For us. That the good news, the gospel that Jesus died for our sins, the good news, the gospel that through faith in what Jesus did for us, we have eternal life, we've been reconciled back to God, we now have fellowship with him, we now have fellowship with one another because of what God has done, and so we give him all the glory. And so now, as we pick it up in Galatians chapter 4, reading verses 12 through 20, Paul says, I, I beg you, brothers and sisters, become as I am, for I have also become as you are. You've not wronged me. You know that I previously preached the gospel to you because of a weakness of the flesh. You did not despise or reject me, though my physical condition was, physical condition was a trial for you. On the contrary, you received me as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus himself. Where then is your blessing? 
For I testify to you that if possible, you would have torn out your own eyes and given them to me. Wow. So then, have I become your enemy? Because I have told you the truth. They court you eagerly, but not for good. They want to exclude you from me so that you would pursue them. But it's always good to be pursued in a good manner, and not just when I'm with you. My children, I am, oops, my children, I am again suffering labor pains for you until Christ is formed in you. I'd like to be there with you right now and change my tone of voice, because I don't know what to do about you. I, I love that last one. Paul says, I, I don't know what to do. I'm writing this letter to you guys, but I, I'm really clueless. I want to be there. And he says, you know, I, my tone of voice would change. You know, again, I, I wouldn't be around, want to be around Paul when he is in that God mode, in the truth mode, and, and getting on to you. But Paul, Paul's no longer their pastor, though he was. He's the one that shared Christ with them. He had been their shepherd, and he still cared for them in their life in Christ. And the culture was different back then. There was, there was no phone calls to keep up with people, no texting or emails. They couldn't look at their Facebook or, or Twitter or whatever to see how they are in life. Paul had been hearing these things from others about the Galatian people. And so because of the logistics where he was, the letter was all that he could do to really be their shepherd. Their shepherd. Um, in that passage, Paul writes about some sort of physical ailment that he had. And what it, it, it tends to, to lead us and what scholars believe that he had his great problems with his eyes. Uh, some kind of in history, earlier history said maybe he had very bad weeping eyes. We don't know maybe because he was blinded by the light of God and scales fell off his eyes. We don't know if it was attributed to that or what it was. But he has something that was not appealing to the masses. It wasn't appealing to people. But the physical part of Paul had nothing to do with biblical leadership. It was the message of Christ that connected them. It was his love for God, his love for people, and his and because of the gospel, because of Paul's commitment to the gospel through Christ, that he was so concerned and still connected to these people. Matter of fact, this morning uh, we got a text from our son that a, a lady named Hazel Seaball had passed away. She was 96 years old. Uh, still attended church every week until a month ago when she fell. Um, she was just a, a really strong Christian when we were pastoring there in Missouri. And it's like, that's so sad, but, but we're still connected. You all have been connected to other places and and where you've lived, or even gone to church before, you still have a, a, a love for some of the people there that you know. Um, and this was Paul, because Paul is like, man, I, I was your shepherd. I poured my life out for you. I, I, I sacrificed really his own ways and followed the ways of Christ as he went to these areas. And, and they were connected to him. Paul said, when I was with you, you know, even with his physical disabilities, it was like you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me if you could have done that. That's commitment. I mean, that's like you guys saying, hey, and John, I know you don't have an arm. Here, let me give you my arm. It's like, that's, that's radical. But Paul said, when I was with you, that's what it was like. We were so connected as the family of God, as we were growing in Christ, learning from the word, as we were praying together, fellowshipping together, they had such a great connection. And again, Different culture. Because cult, Paul. But he stayed with them as he shared Christ and, and developed leadership and got them growing in Christ. And so Paul had to leave. But when Paul was there, it says they received him as an angel from God. Or it says, he said, even as Christ Jesus himself. They respected and honored him so much. And it wasn't because Paul was a celebrity preacher. Matter of fact, he was, he was disliked by a lot of Christians, and especially Jews, because he was very strong about the truth of God. They weren't following him because he was a celebrity pastor. They weren't following him because he was a real handsome dude. You know? 
It wasn't because Paul was a smooth talker. It wasn't because small Paul small. So it wasn't Paul. Matter of fact, Paul was a small guy too, so it wasn't because of his height. But was it because he was well educated and had a lot of things, although he was educated, but it wasn't about his credentials. It wasn't because Paul was a very athletic person, though he loved sports. It wasn't because of Paul had anything, the qualities of the world says these are important for you to be a leader. They loved Paul because Paul loved Jesus. They loved to follow Paul because Paul followed Jesus. Paul was passionate about Christ, and it showed in his life and his teaching. But Paul had left, and others had crept in that were against Paul, that were against the grace that Paul's been writing about, and not of, of works of, for salvation. They had they come in with different ideas and badmouth Paul, but they appealed to mankind's desire to check off boxes. Do this, do this, do this, God will love you more. If you want to go any farther, do this over here, God will love you even more. And if you do all these boxes at the end, if you got a good score, then hey, you've made it to heaven. And that was the works that, that Paul was fighting against, against the, the traditions of that time. And it, and it felt good to them. Because again, we, we like to check off boxes. I mean, I'm a husband, I have a to-do list. I don't know who wrote it, but somebody wrote it for me. And it's a to-do list at home. And, and as a matter of fact, I've got it on my phone, and it feels good to me to go, done, right? Because I, I do that, it feels good that I did that, but it also feels good that I'm pleasing my wife. And we do that sometimes with God, and Paul again has been fighting that. I don't want to go through that today, because I'll talk about it more later on. But these people were saying, yeah, Paul's right in some areas, but it's not enough. you got to add this for God to love you, to accept you, to be saved. And this is why... Paul is so perplexed. I don't want to keep that flock in Galatia. He cared. He truly and Paul loved the good shepherd. I mean, that's that's what we know. This the shepherd here. I don't know who he is. I mean, but it, I don't think I'd want to mess with him either, you know. He just looks pretty tough guy out there with a sheep. Um, but we know there's a great good shepherd. Jesus said in John 10, 11, he says, I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So Jesus is looking around. And he, he, they understand shepherds out there. I mean, there were shepherds like this, like the last picture, uh, what they were looking at. And so he understood that these shepherds lived to protect the sheep. These shepherds lived because that was their livelihood. They would lie down again, sleep, and eat with the sheep. But they would protect the sheep. And Paul loved the good shepherd. Paul learned from the good shepherd. Paul lived his life and wanted to be like the good shepherd Christ. And God loves the shepherds here too, who are leading the flocks of God. This is Old Testament, and it's for, written for the, the Jewish people, but Jeremiah 3.15, God says, I will give you shepherds who are loyal to me, and they will shepherd you with knowledge and skill. I mean, we look at Paul here. Paul is loyal to God. I mean, even to the point of death, he kept on following God. With knowledge, the knowledge of the scripture, skill of, of discerning and leading and living out the word of God. Shepherds. Shepherds who, like Paul, want the flock to love God, to follow God, into those green pastures, those still waters, 
the places where God has us, even through the valleys of the shadows of death and heartache. And so God has, has given shepherds, Hebrews 13, 17, obey your leaders and submit to them since they watch over your souls as those who will give an account. So they can do this with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Paul was experiencing grief because the people had left the true teaching of the word. Paul, again, had poured out his life. Matter of fact, with Paul, you know, he did He was stoned and they thought he was dead. They, I mean, rocks, not stoned otherwise, but throwing rocks until he's dead. Uh, he's been in prison so many times, but he said one of the greatest things of the, what he receives is his concern for the, the churches. Yeah, you know, and this is not about me today, but I, I, I know this. Times I wake up in the middle of the night, I'm just like, concern for the church, concern for individuals in the church that that of kind of wandering around, knowing that, that they've heard or knowing that they've been encouraged, but, but yet seem to go backwards, which brings grief. So to the flock, to the Galatians, to you, the Bible says that we're to follow the shepherd who is following God who is loyal to God, who is living for God. And again, not in a perfect way. Paul wasn't perfect. You will not find a perfect pastor, a perfect preacher. But there should be that example of following the truth, of living for God, of loving the church, of sacrificing for the flock, because of wanting the flock to know Christ in the fullest way. Wanting the church, wanting the flock to be out in the world in truth, sharing the truth with others. But the responsibility also on the shepherd in, in Acts 20, verse 28, talking to these shepherds or pastors, be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own so first, got to guard. I've got to guard myself. Paul had to guard himself, and we know that this Galatian letter was one of the first letters that Paul wrote, and we can see kind of his his brashness, his harsh times where he says, "You foolish Galatians." Although that's a, a phrase I would love to use at times, stupid fool. Uh, but Paul has, was always trying and growing in guarding himself. People who held him accountable. Times where he was very open and said, I'm not doing the things I want to do, and I'm, I'm doing things I don't want to do. Saying that he, he's the chief of sinners at times, and, and he struggles in his walk with God, following of God. But his, his focus was always trying to be loyal to God, coming back in the path, because he, he knew that was the best way. Guard myself is one of way as Paul did, but also be on guard for the flock, because the Holy Spirit has put it here in my life, a calling to do so. And again, it's not lifting me up. God has called each one of us to serve him. But to shepherd the flock of God, and, and sometimes I look at, at Paul and I say, man, I want to be like Paul. I want to be so bold, and I can be very timid at times in the shepherding the flock of God and seeing the sheep going astray and not going after that sheep. But the focus here at the end is to understand who we are. That Christ purchased us with his blood. That's why we focus on the cross so much. To remind ourselves that we're not here just because it's another club we want to go to. It's another time where we can, we can gather and maybe eat, because we like that, or just go and, and, and sing some songs we enjoy. We are here because Christ gave his life for us. He bought us with his life on the cross. 
Yeah. And that's why Paul has been writing this letter to the Galatians because he cared about them so much. Say, it is faith alone in Christ alone. To the glory of God alone. That 19th verse of Galatians, my children, I'm suffering, again, suffering labor pains for you, and so Christ is for me. I've never been pregnant. I cannot get pregnant, right? My wife has. I, I saw just the pains that she went through. And Paul is likening his shepherding the flock to these labor pains, where it's so crushing at times. And Paul is now hundreds of miles away. He's writing letters because of, of, of what he's heard about the Galatian people and their, and their lack of following Christ in truth. And it's causing great pains again, but he's not just dropping it. He's saying, I, I'm continuing on. He's writing this later, letter because his, his desire, his goal for the Galatians is that Christ is fully formed in you. That they, they understand more and more and more the greatness of Christ the greatness of Christ in everyday life, of understanding the gospel being preached to yourself every day, that I was a sinner, Christ died for me, so I must and want to live for him every single day. Paul wants them to be like Jesus, as Paul was striving for himself to be like Jesus. around and set your arm and says, what would Jesus do? By the way, the idea is what we think Jesus did. That's the danger. Help me in this endeavor. Paul wrote to the Christians in Ephesus, Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, he says, therefore, be imitators of God, as dearly loved children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us, a sacrificial and fragrant offering, offering to God. Paul did at one point said, follow me, be imitators of me. He says, as he's imitating God, as he's following God. And imitation is not the imitation that we think, it's to be like God. Be imitators as God, as dearly loved children, as children of God that we become when we put our faith in Christ. Walk in love with one another. Walk in true, true focus of one another for the glory of God because we're the church of God, because we're the flock of God. All going... ...life for us. And we, just like the Galatian people, we struggle with different things. We struggle with our focus. We go because, well, we don't want people to think bad of us. We come together that way. We go because I did something bad and I need to get God back on my side. We go. We go because I want to tell somebody something that happened to me this week. It had nothing to do really with what I think was God, but I'm going to tell them anyway. We go for many reasons. But I know many of us, we come because of God. But we all, again, struggle with that. <coughs> We all become like the Galatian people. I need to check off something because I did something bad. But this is the case. We are to be imitating God. Following Christ the best we can. Imitating. This is my calling for here as, as the under-shepherd for Christ here for this flock of God. That's so when Paul is writing these things, it's like it gets real in my life at times. How I have not been a great shepherd at times. But I am growing in that following Christ, being more loyal to him, more reading God's word, understanding the truth, and sharing that truth, and being an example of, to the flock of God. Because of Jesus, we, as we live as a church, should bring glory to God. Because of Jesus, we, individuals, should live for Christ to the glory of God. Because of all that he has done for us. So just as in closing, I mean, think about your own life. Are you imitating God? 
Or is that your desire? As a body in within the body of Christ, as an individual when you go into work or school or your home or whatever. Are you wanting Christ to be fully formed in you? Have you committed yourself just to be part of this body more and more, uh, gathering together to be strengthened by one another? Praying for your shepherd here, because I need your prayer, because I pray for you. It's, it's this wonderful picture, again, of Christ. So you read Psalm 23, that's Christ and his shepherd. I want God to be glorified through my life. I want God to be glorified through your life individually. And I want God to be glorified through this church. Let's make that our prayer, our desire. In Jesus. Let's pray. God, that you have given to us. Messed up at times, but Lord, how we talk, and in Christ. Believe me. Knowledge of Christ. through our life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to stand and sing a closing song. Just a prayer to God. Lord be glorified. I'm going to sing about ourselves, about the church, and bring back to ourselves. <laughs> Again, we have a new website, or new, just a new name for a website. It's newhopecv.com. And Chris, we're going to go to the next slide. This is actually a live look at the website. Um, and so you can find all that you need there. Uh, you have our announcements. There's a calendar. Tell us what's coming up. You can do your prayer requests. We're getting ready to start our church directory. Uh, it's going to be an online directory, but also have a printable directory, too. Uh, this will be very uh, secure online, so don't have to worry about that. But... Uh, Aaron O'Brien is going to be helping out with that and getting that going here. Uh, we used to have one a long time ago, but we're doing it again. And so uh, that's, that's coming. And so we encourage you, go to the website. 
You can pray, share prayer requests, or if you want to write out prayer requests, we have some yellow slips out there. You can write that. You can write on a, on a piece of paper. You can grab toilet paper and write out prayer requests if you want. That's up to you. But share prayer requests. You can just talk to somebody. If you want me to another prayer request, you can hand it to me. There's a box out there by my my office. Uh, just turn them in. I love to pray for people. God works through prayer. We share prayer requests uh, with one another. Upcoming birthday, Sue Stevens has a birthday. Yeah, that's awesome. Olin already told me he's getting her a new car for her birthday, so she's excited about that. Yeah, a little matchbox car for her. So happy birthday, Sue. And anniversary, Don and Sue Mason have an anniversary this week. How many years, sir? No, he's supposed to answer that, Sue, but thank you. Thank you, Sue. Does he, you, I'm sure he remembered. 54. Congratulations to you, man. Uh, so Mama B's, we, we meet down, down there. Mama B's at 945-ish, whatever you want to come around. It's for coffee and fellowship. It's, it's been just very good as we go down there if you're available. I know some of you can't. That's okay. Um, and on Wednesday morning, we gather... As men downstairs, we pray, and then we head out to Flip's Pancake House. And, you know, Denny's closed, and we were kind of sad about that, but we're building new relationships as we kind of shine the light there at the Flip's Pancake House. So that's what we're to do wherever we go, is to shine the light. If you get bad suit service, don't be a jerk. Pray for the person. You have no idea what they're going through. Encourage them. Um, just, just tell them. Not, not, yeah, anyway. Then Wednesday night, Bible study. Um, we're, we're continuing on just a study of, of looking at how the scripture can tell us how we know, can know, that we are truly saved. Uh, it's, a, it's an assurance, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, we sing that. Uh, so we're doing this uh, in-depth study downstairs from 6.30 to 7.15. We also meet on Zoom, and so if you can't meet us in person, we'll downstairs. Young Women's Ministry, Aaron. Okay, so two weeks, <coughs> Thursday, this time repeating myself if you weren't here or you want to hear again um, middle school up to 40 or just come we're talking about the basics last time we talked about who Christ some of the attributes of who God is and this time we're going to talk about that and who we say he is in response to that so come we want you to come I want you to come so do it That's all. do it there you go. All right. thank you uh, gospel conversation training is coming up uh, September 24th from 9 a.m. To, to 1 p.m. If you'd like to do that, just how do we talk to people about Christ? This is just a tool that we're learning. Um, and on that, there's going to be some light snacks, also a lunch. That's why we need to get rich so we can uh, be prepared. October 2nd on the Sunday from 3 to 4 30. You're making the blessing baskets as you fellowship. Members feel and meeting is coming up on October 9th. Uh, that's our quarterly time we fellowship. We eat together. Uh, we're already working on that. Uh, we don't know anything yet, food wise, right? Bye. Debbie? Sorry. All right. I'm making a decision of full potluck. Full potluck, right? Full potluck on that day. So church provides all the drinks and Utensils and plates. Yeah, we're, we're actually hoping to be outside for the service um, that morning. Uh, so weather dependent. Uh, so you pray for good weather on that day. A little warmer weather for April, October 9th, whatever that day is. All right, so that's coming up. And then how can I serve? I get to be up here. Last couple of times I had you down here. Been very pleased with people filling out. How can I serve through this church? But getting some great things of what some people are doing outside, and I love that, outside the, the body, and just see how people are living for Christ out different ways. Uh, all right. Offering. As you leave, there's an offering box in the back where you can give online. Again, we're to pray. We're to praise God through offering. Pray about, God, what you want me to do. Uh, but during this month of September, we are part of the Illinois Baptist State Association. Next slide there, Chris. And so each year we, we give specifically to mission projects that are going on here in uh, Illinois. Uh, this, today we're at 
be closed after when the video closes, we're done. Uh, this is a guy that Don and I know. His name's John Kelly. He shares his testimony here. And I love this. For your work. And so, uh, any, any other announcements before we close with this video? All right. Let me turn on this microphone. Okay, Chris, please. One question I'd ask all Illinois Baptists to consider is what would life be like? if you didn't have your church. The vast majority around Chicago don't have such a family. We don't lack need for churches and missionaries to be in the city on mission. The neighborhood of Austin that we reside in is about 100,000 people, yeah. right? So, so, so if we were to plant, you know, 300 churches, we wouldn't even touch everyone. Well, Austin is just one of 77 neighborhoods in Chicago. John Kelly now leads the Chicago West Bible Church, a church that knows it's a missionary to its Austin neighborhood. But his path to the pulpit in Chicago was less than conventional. Just 20 years ago, he was sitting in a jail cell for murder. I was born in Chicago. Um, but grew up in Philadelphia. My family had uh, come to this country from Jamaica, so I grew up in a single parent home. And my mother would drive her best. I got into a lot of trouble. First time I ever got arrested, I was 12. I was ripping and running the streets, and unfortunately, made a very poor decision. I turned 19, went with a group of friends uh, to rob one of the drug dealers in the neighborhood, and one of my friends shot and killed him. It's 2000. You know, IBSA, Send Network, and Plants of Chicago West Bible Church. We've just been trying to focus on long-term missionary mentality here in the city. John's church has accomplished something that so few churches do well, and that is how do you bring all these different backgrounds, all these cultures under the same roof? And, and Chicago West Bible Church has done that. One of the beautiful things about IBSA, we're focused strictly on Illinois. And so being able to partner with people who are in the same region, have a heart for the same uh, state, we all would be tender to those who need a church. It's so important to have a place where every community has a strong gospel witness. When you give to the Mission Illinois offering, you provide resources to start new churches across Chicagoland. The gospel are even greater. 